Hello and welcome back to the FPL Tom YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be covering the best Game Week 25 free hit. If you are thinking of activating the chip this Game Week, then this is the ultimate video for you. If you do enjoy the content that you see on the channel, please be sure to like, comment and subscribe. I also answer all questions down in the comment section below. And before we get started in today's video, I just want to say a huge thank you to all the support that's been happening on the channel and on the TikTok page over the past kind of couple of weeks. It's really going well, so thank you very much for your support. But that's enough waffle from me. Let's get in to our Game Week 25 free hit draft. And starting off our Game Week 23 free hit draft, we're going to take a look at the back line. Starting us off in goal is Edison. Now, I do think there are potentially better goalkeepers out there with a potential double Game Week, but I feel our back line and our midfield is pretty stacked with double Game Week players. So I have gone for Edison away at Bournemouth, arguably one of the worst teams in the league at the moment. And for me, he's the only nailed kind of City defender, or even City player at this point, who I guarantee will be playing in game game week 25 city haven't been as consistent with their defensive kind of numbers that we're so used to seeing from them in previous seasons there has been no clean sheets in their last four premier league games i think it's just down to the fact that they're chop and change in the defense all the time playing this weird free at the back with no left back or no right back at times it's such a weird system but Bournemouth, like we said, one of the worst teams in the league. I really like Edison as a potential option in goal this game week. Hopefully he can get a clean sheet. And, well, I don't think he's going to get any save points for you. I do think um, Ramsdale from Arsenal is another fantastic shout. But you'll see where the other Arsenal assets are in our team. So I think Edison enables better Arsenal options with in our team moving into the back line we do go to trent alexander arnold liverpool and the Tr and trent looked kind of sort of back to their best over the past few weeks one assist and 20 points in his last five appearances however a 12 point haul against newcastle has put him on fpl managers radars once again a fantastic double for liverpool crystal palace away and wolves at home crystal palace haven't won this year. I think they've not. They've they're now eight without a, a win in all competitions. And Wolves, obviously, they're a little bit hit and miss at the moment. Um, obviously, in a relegation battle as well. So you do expect Liverpool to dominate that one. Trent has also had the highest expected assists among defenders over the past five game weeks. And in terms of expected assists, he's the fifth ranked player among all players over the past five game weeks. So you can see Trent starting to get himself back into the fold, back into people's minds. And I think it's a really good option to get him ahead of this double in your free hit. Moving to our first centre-back, and it is Max Kilman, arguably one of the most wool, uh, nailed Wolves players that they do have. Obviously, it's not an easy double for Wolves, Fulham away and Liverpool away, obviously Fulham in quite good form at the moment, not conceding many goals. The XG has been quite terrible all season, but it just seems to just be working for them, which is a weird scenario. And then obviously Liverpool away, Liverpool coming back into a little bit of form as well. But we did see what happened um, at the Molyneux a couple of weeks ago, where Wolves absolutely played them off the pitch. I don't expect too much from Max Kilman. However, at a bargain bottom price of 4.2 million, he allows us to do a lot of other great things with our team. Double game week player, so hopefully he can keep a clean sheet in the Fulham game. And then the Liverpool game, I'm not too fussed if anything happens in that one. Moving on to our second centre-back, and it is James Tarkowski, a man who's on the top of my priority list for this game week, and a player you definitely should have in your free hit draft. Aston Villa haven't been very consistent since Emery's come in. They'll win some games, they'll lose some games. They do leak quite a few goals. Sean Dyche has obviously bringing that defensive resility back to Burnley. And Tarkowski is their main threat from set pieces. Not even just set pieces. He's had the second most shots for all Everton players in the past five game weeks. Every set piece is going towards this man's head. I expect him to get at least at least one attacking return this game week. It's a bold claim, but I'm just putting it out there. I expect this man to do well over this game week. Obviously, the trip to Arsenal as well scored in the reverse fixture a couple of weeks ago with a bullet of a header as he's kind of been famous doing over the past few years in the Premier League. Really like the double and Tarkowski is Everton's main threat. 
Moving on to our last centre-back, and it is Gabriel. Really like this double for Arsenal, like I said. Leicester and Everton, absolutely fantastic double for Arsenal. There is obviously the debate to be had whether we play Ramsdale or do we kind of put Gabriel in here. I went Gabriel. I went for him as well over players like Ben White, as I do feel he's a little bit more nailed. And I also went for him over Saliba because I do feel he has just that little bit of extra set-piece threat that obviously he potentially could score in one of these games. It will be very interesting to see if he does that. But that was the defence of the team. Let's move in to the midfield. And moving swiftly into the midfield, we do start with Bakayo Saka, a real, real essential for game week 25 and for the next few game weeks Arsenal have a nice fixture run coming up I definitely think he is potentially captaincy material for game week 25 if you've got your triple captain chip as well maybe even worth throwing it on him been in really good form over the past five game weeks six games three goals two assists and 38 points scored the highest scoring Arsenal player over that time period like we said with Gabriel an amazing amazing double set of fixtures there Leicester and Everton at home. The thing I like about Bakayo Saka as well is he's still on penalties. We saw that in the Manchester City game. Obviously, there was quite a bit of debate around whether or not Jorginho would potentially be taking them, but it doesn't look like that's going to be happening. I also like Saka over players like Martinelli, Trossard, because he is a lot more nailed, a lot more likely to start and a lot more likely to finish games as well. So really like him as an option. I definitely think he's an essential player that you must have for game week 25. Moving on to the next midfielder, it is Mohamed Salah, obviously scoring against Newcastle. Like we said with Trent as well, really good double Palace in absolute disarray at the moment. Eight games without a win. No wins in all competitions so far this season. So that's a nice tasty fixture there as well. Only one goal and one assist in his past five game weeks. But like we said, he did look quite good against Liverpool. Potential captaincy material as well. On penalties, we know what this man's about when he's back to fully firing. It does seem like the cogs are starting to turn a little bit for Liverpool. Players coming back from injury as well should help him get back to the levels we are used to seeing from him. Moving on to our third midfielder, and it is Martin Odegaard, the second highest Arsenal scoring player. One goal, two assists, and 28 points over the past five game weeks. He had a phenomenal game against Aston Villa, the captain of Arsenal as well, so you can expect him to finish a lot of games. Like we've said with Gabriel and Saka, absolutely great, great fixtures. It's been a quiet few weeks for Martin Odegaard. Obviously, Arsenal not been in the best form. There's, there's kind of this little bit of a shaky period, but it does seem like that Villa win has definitely sparked something in their team. So hopefully, with this double, they can win both games, get lots of goals, and get lots of goal involvements for our attacking players like Saka and Odegaard. The next, pick, the next pick isn't as straightforward as the rest of them have been so far. It is Jack Grealish. Now, initially, sorry, I did have Riyad Mahrez when I was making this concept. However, he didn't play at the weekend, so I think he's potentially going to play in the Champions League against Leipzig. Grealish, on the other hand, is a player who's been very impressive for me, kind of just... Not even looking at his stats, I've just been kind of watching the eye test and he's definitely been passing that over the past few game weeks. Like I said, it is a rogue pick, but over the past five game weeks, two goals, two assists and 30 points scored. You could argue that he is in the best form of his City career so far. And like we said with Edison, Bournemouth are pretty, pretty dreadful. So it's definitely a fixture we want to be looking to take advantage of. I could easily see him outscoring potentially one of the players with a double game week. Really like him as an option, but obviously understand if you don't want to put a City player in there because Pep Roulette this season has been on like another level it's been absolutely crazy so fully understand if you don't want to put Jack Grealish in your team but if you are going to take a pick on him let me know down in the comments below and moving on to our final midfielder, it is Cody Gakpo, another man who's been kind of passing my eye test, picking up some impressive scores as well on So Rare, if you do play that game, been doing very well on that game, showing his kind of involvement in the play, which is very good to see. Five goals, two goals, zero assists, good XG, and the most shots among Liverpool players over the past five game weeks. Like with Salah, like with Trent, we do mention the fixtures. Crystal Palace in a little bit of disarray. I think the Darwin injury as well um, potential injury obviously it looked like he damaged his shoulder don't really know the extent of the injury at the moment I think I would prefer Darwin over Gakpo 
But I think if Darwin is out, that makes Gakpo an even better option. 7.7 .7 million, a super, super big differential as well. He is a player that I'm potentially looking to target this game week. I think he's at like... 2.2% ownership it's at this point now in the game where you kind of get these options where you have to kind of take them I know as a one week punt I think this is a fantastic option he could easily go off he's looked really really sharp putting up some impressive scores in so rare as well showing his involvement in the game so I really like Cody Gakpo as an option let me know down in the comments below are you thinking about taking a punt on Cody Gakpo but let's move on to our striking position and the final player within our team and of course finishing our lineup is Erling Haaland Bournemouth away Obviously, the highest scoring player in the game at the moment. Five goals, two assists in his past five game weeks as well. A lot of people have been saying his kind of form has dipped, but, you know, that's still pretty impressive over the past five game weeks. Five goals and two assists. Really good numbers there. The only concern I do have with Haaland for this game week, I definitely wouldn't be looking to captain him if I was on the free hit, or even if I wasn't on the free hit, would not be looking to captain Erling Haaland this week. I, def I definitely think this potentially could be a game where Julian Alvarez is kind of playing. If we get early team news that Alvarez is potentially going to be in that lineup, or if Haaland plays a full 90 in the Champions League, I definitely think it could be worth taking a look at him as a potential one-week punt as well. But Haaland, you know, you kind of have to have him if he's going to play. He's obviously going to potentially score. Should have easily scored a goal at Forest. Missed two absolute huge opportunities, did he, on Saturday. So, yeah, it's a difficult one to say with Haaland. If we get early team news or if he plays a full 90, it definitely could be worth going for Julian Alvarez. I think he would be a fantastic one-week punt. But at the moment, I am saying stick with the highest scoring player in the game up front. Before we finish, let's quickly run through the bench. Danny Ward, just cheap and is going to play. Willie Nonto, a player who's absolutely been smashing it for Leeds this year so far. Southampton at home, absolutely massive game for both clubs' survival opportunities. If you don't fancy a Jack Grealish or a Haaland or any other players, maybe a Kilman, then I definitely think Willie Nonto is a good shout. Watkins I put in here as well. He wouldn't be a player that I'd actually have on my bench, but I just wanted to highlight his kind of good performances and his good scoring runs that he's been going on over the past few weeks scoring quite a few goals obviously kind of taking the eye of um, a few managers as well again would be a huge differential doesn't double has Everton away though so it is a nice fixture and then Bueno is just going to finish the bench 3.9 million just helping us save that extra bit of budget to get as many top quality players in our starting side but yeah that was the game week 25 free hit draft let me know down in the comments below what you think of it what you're gonna plan out your plans are sorry with your team if you did enjoy the content please like comment and subscribe i hope you have a great day and thank you very much for watching